What is up guys? Welcome to another episode of Stoked on Spokes. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the 27.2 pine dropper post and loam lever for your gravel bike. So this all begins with a story. Last year, I went headfirst into the world of mountain biking, which meant converting my fully rigid karate monkey to a versatile hardtail. Now I added 140 millimeters of travel in the front with the RockShox sector and 125 millimeters in the back. Now it is a hardtail, so by 125 millimeters of travel in the back, I mean a dropper post. Believe it or not, the 125 millimeters in the back made way more of a difference in the bike handling than the 140 millimeters in the front of suspension. How do I know this? Well, the fork actually took some time to get to me. So I was riding a fully rigid karate monkey with the dropper post and having a blast. That little segment of time where it was a fully rigid with a dropper really led me to ponder the thought, if this is how this bike feels with a dropper post, what would a dropper post offer on my gravel bike. So I did some research and found out that one of the best players in the game, in the gravel game for dropper post was PNW Components. They offer mountain bike and gravel components at an amazing price. I reached out to the team at PNW seeing if they had a loaner for review. Now this is full disclosure, not a sponsored video, but they did send me not a loner, but my own pine dropper post and loam lever. And some pretty sweet socks. It's like Christmas morning. They told me to keep my videos with no bias, no BS, just to review them and share my thoughts with you guys. So I wanna thank PNW for sending me these items and trusting the process and the creative ship that is stoked on spokes. This is the first company that I've reached out to as a new YouTube channel because I was genuinely stoked on their product and I wanted to test one, try one out, review it for you guys. So thanks again, TJ and the folks at PNW. So I got the 27.2 pine dropper post with the externally routed option because my Kona Rove doesn't have the internal hole for the internally routed dropper posts. And I didn't really want to drill a hole in the frame so I just went with the externally routed post. The post and loam lever are super easy to set up. It took me about 15 to 20 minutes. I didn't film the process because PNW Components has a really helpful video. It's on their YouTube channel. The video is really well made. It doesn't have any extra information that you don't care about. It has everything you need to set it up. So I'll link it below. If you get these two items, go check it out and you'll be on your way. So before I get to my first impressions on the pine dropper and loam lever, I wanna talk about what are some of the advantages that a dropper post adds to your bike, whether that's a mountain bike or a gravel bike. So this is one of my favorite advantages and it might be the lazy part of me talking, but getting on and off your bike. As you all know, it's pretty easy to get on and off your bike without a dropper post, but with a dropper post, it makes that process way easier. Since I've put one on my mountain bike, I use it all the time to get on and off the bike. It's just become second nature. Now I've started doing that with the Kona Rove and again, it's becoming second nature. It's the easiest way to get off your bike, get on your bike and just get going. So in addition to being able to mount your bike easier, if you have a commute with a lot of stops, like in a city, you can touch the ground with the dropper down so you don't have to necessarily get out of the saddle to be able to stop. Second point would be easier storage. Have you ever tried to fit your bike into your car or maybe a friend's car and the post is in the way? Sure, you can take your front wheel off. That's what most of us do to save some space and make our bikes more compact. But the ability to push down your saddle and to take that tall lengthy seat post down to nothing is really good to fit in small spaces. Another point that I took from Dustin's video about his bomb track build was the aerodynamics. Now if you're going down a descent you might want to tuck your body 
into your frame as much as you can. Being able to put your dropper post in that bottom position gets your body lower to the ground and effectively mimics this position. And the last reason is the main reason you would want a dropper post. So whether you ride a mountain bike or not, you have to admit that your gravel bike can take you special places. That's why you ride a gravel bike. So adding a dropper post is just going to extend that and it's going to extend the ability for you to feel comfortable in that scenario or in that situation. But enough about why dropper posts are awesome. Let's talk about the pine. So I've ridden the pine dropper post with the loam lever for about a month now and all I can say is that it does its job. It's reliable. As long as you set it up correctly and your cable tension is correct, the loam lever will never fail. And it is very quiet. It was kind of weird at first to get used to because the dropper post I'm used to on the Karate Monkey is quite loud. If you've heard a dropper post, you know the sound. But the pine has this delicate sound. At first, I'll be honest, it was kind of strange. I like the loud sound of a dropper post, but I'm getting more and more used to it. It's very subtle. It's nice. The dropper post has barely any side-to-side -side play, which is to be expected with any dropper post. The whole concept of a dropper is to be able to move your seat post. So I have yet to see a dropper post that has zero side-to-side -side play, both on a mountain bike or a gravel bike. They have this tiny little wiggle that's okay. It's not something that I can feel at all while riding, but if you're very sensitive as far as stability of your seat post, then a dropper post might not be for you. So let's talk about the loam lever. The loam lever is one of the many options that you can choose to actuate your dropper post, and it is on the tops of your drop bar. This had a little bit of a learning curve for me to get used to as, of course, on a mountain bike you're used to being able to actuate the dropper post while your fingers, your index finger, is on the front brake. That being said, the loam lever actuates the dropper post effortlessly. It is better than the lever I have on my mountain bike. Super easy to use, again, if set up correctly, and requires very little effort to actuate the dropper. We will see how I grow into the position of where the loam lever is. It's definitely in a good position out of the way, but it does require a little bit of intuition as far as knowing when you're gonna actuate your dropper post. Also, the teal, that's color coordination for you. So overall, the pine dropper post and loam lever are definitely something that I like on the gravel bike. I think dropper posts on gravel bikes are a little taboo as of now but they will be implemented and added into more and more builds on future gravel bikes it's just how it's gonna go as people ride their gravel bikes more and more off-road dropper posts are just gonna start appearing stock in gravel bikes that's my opinion anyway let me know what you guys think are dropper posts welcomed on a gravel bike or should they stay in the mountain bike world? Start a positive conversation down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, be sure to hit that like button. And for the final review and final thoughts on the pine dropper and loam lever, be sure to subscribe. I will see you guys in the next one. Till then, remember to stay stoked on spokes.